Well, you know, they say you got mossed. Like, that's the thing. You got mossed. Mm-hmm. What? How was it? Was that a thing when you were playing? Like, you were mossing dudes? Because I feel like yeah. you did You did what getting mossed, you did it better than what he, what they say getting <laughs> mossed. Like, I always thought like, I always thought of Calvin mossing dudes. Like, I never thought of Moss actually mossing dudes. He was running, catching the over the shoulder, running past you. You were the one actually mossing dudes. I'm, I always wonder why is it called Moss and not like Calvin Johnson? You know what I mean? What's up, guys? It's the St. Brown Brothers. We're back with another episode, a uh, playoff episode. Um, shoot, like I told you, I don't know what week it is. We just keep going. Um, this episode is presented by Knock Around Sunglasses, quality shades that won't break the bank. Um, use code SPB for 20% off for new customers. Exclusions apply. And we do have a special guest for this episode. Um, unfortunately, it isn't Jameson Williams. He's still, you know, mm. still doesn't want to come on. He said... Got stuff coming up, so we're gonna keep trying with Jameson. But this this guest, um, arguably, maybe one of the best players at his position of all time. So make sure you stay tuned. Okay, okay. Um, so I wasn't there at the game. You guys won. I watched on TV. Um, I want to know: was it louder this game or last game? What do you so think? I just saw. I just saw a stat. We broke the record from last game by a decibel. Okay, so what'd you a feel? Decibel louder, what, but what would you feel though? Pre-game, definitely the uh, last game because, bro, like yeah, first playoff game. When I mm-hmm. when when I got out there to warm up, it was damn near packed. Like people were mm-hmm. yelling, hooting, and hollering. I'm like, this is crazy. Um, this game was, I mean, it was good too. Coming out pre-game, a bunch of people there. Um, but once the game started, I mean, it felt the same. Uh, we had like I think I'm, first possession, we got a pick. When we got that pick, boy, it was so loud. I'm like, damn, this place is rocking. So I honestly want to know when we broke the record, like when it hit 134 or whatever. Uh, but atmosphere was, I mean, if the last one was a 10 or a nine and a half, this one was a nine and a half, 10. It was damn near the same. Um, it was great. Let me ask you this. You watching, did you think, were you nervous? No. Not really. Did you see when they went for two when they scored? Yeah. I, I still don't know why they did that. I mean, they, I, they, I, they, the announcer's trying to say like something like statistically. I, this is what I say. He's like statistically. They heard his sign like you go for two now, and if you get it, obviously if you get it, you want to get it. You have a chance to win. But if you don't get it, you have to score a touchdown anyways. You go for two again to tie it up. But then he's like, and people say like kicking a PAT. He's like, it's not kicking two PATs is not hundred percent. So like making two PATs is like ninety five percent. So they're trying to say like going for two twice is better. I don't know. So it was like I'm like, something. yo, what? They're going for? They're trying to really go for the juggler. I'm like, hold yeah. on, like we gotta. Yeah. This is not. This is crazy. Yeah, I was um, a little nervous. I was a little stressed when, uh, not nervous, but I was like, when they scored before the half, how easy that was going to Mike Evans and shit. I was like, if they just keep throwing the ball, I'm like, too deep one time. I'm like, if they just keep throwing the ball, I'm like, it might be over. Like it's dangerous. Like, but that's what I say about your defense. Like your offense is great. Don't get me wrong. Like. I guess Niners your offense will be fine, but your defense, man, you just step the fuck up. Like defense look, championships. They step we we get picks, like they step up when they need to. Like Okay, I'm just saying like, it's it's scary. Like every game, shit. look, every game there's a receiver. Even last that game off, too, right? Every game. Even, last, even the first off. game. Even the first game, like, bro, there's I mean Rams scoring every play, every position. The receiver like, that goes no, in the red zone, we stopped him every time. Okay. Against the Rams. Bro, like fuck. It's like they drive him down every time. Like, damn. Like the receiver goes off every game, we still win. Bro, if we're winning, like Let's keep. Obviously, you want to play better, but um, yeah, obviously, we're working. That's we're stopping the run. That's only sustainable. We're stopping the run, making so him throw long. it. You, you might want to let him last game. You might want to let him run a little more, and not let we're him not play. letting Christian McCaffrey run. I promise. Bro, All right. that that boy is filthy. I'm just saying. I want you guys. I want you guys to win so bad because I don't want to go to Vegas for. I really don't. See, you go. want us to win, and you don't. But you don't. I want you guys. Vegas. No, I want you guys to win so bad. So like. I have a reason to go, you know, because I might go regardless, but like, I don't want to go. Would you go to the game if we, if I went? No, the tickets too expensive. I was watching it. And what? I wouldn't, I, what do you mean? You wouldn't go to the Super Bowl. You like, if I'm playing. 
the pension must go for like nosebleeds. I seen I seen the prices. Nah, OB. nosebleeds. The ones I get the the tickets I get. Oh, I don't know what tickets you get. If we make yeah. it, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, if you got two tickets for me, yeah, I'll go. No, I'm saying obviously I'm bro. I'm gonna need more tickets for everyone, but if the package were one, I would book my flight to Detroit, and then obviously thinking you guys are gonna win. But if you guys were lost, I would cancel my flight within 24 hours. But I was hoping the Packers won so I could go to Detroit and watch the game. Did you watch that game, bro? It was crazy. Yeah, it was, bro. I'm like, fuck. Bro. Packers were hot. I don't care what no one says. Yeah, like, nobody wanted to see the Packers. They're, they're training at the right time. I was thinking about this. The, the, NFC North might be the best division next year. Right? Mm-hmm. The Bears, like, Bears are going to be good again. Or you guys, mm-hmm. good defense. So, like, it's going to be automatic. Mm-hmm. If you have a good the, defense, the, you'll be. The, the Bears, like, it's similar to what you guys did. Is, isn't that crazy? It was one year behind. You look at the no, you guys didn't win like we did last. We won, bro. Last year at the end of the year, we were hot. We were hot too. We won no, like six we straight. Lost. We lost to the Packers at the end of the year. I know, but we were we were we had one game off, you guys. We lost to the Browns. You had nine wins. We had eight wins. Yeah, but Nimi, we went one and six to start the year, bro. We were zero and something to start the year too. We we're like zero and five. No, you didn't. You guys beat. Yeah, we games. did. No, we were 0 like 5, 0 and 6 to start the game. Start the, start the year. I'm telling you. But then, you know, so so next year, you guys, but you didn't miss the playoff fight. We missed it by literally a game. We would have missed it by a game. We have one more loss than you, so we missed it by two games. So you guys got to go out. You're telling next year you guys are going to be in the playoffs. We're going to be a Super Bowl. Huh? Mm hmm. Yeah, we went boom. Wait. Oh, let's start from the last game. I don't know why it's backwards. Loss. But why is this shit not in order, bro? Oh, it is. Now it is. Okay. Where's the first game? One, two, three, four. We went on four. We were you one and five. To start the year? We were, no. We were one and five to start the year. Mm-hmm. But yeah, our division, like I said... Might be one of the best ones. Green Bay, us, you guys, and the Vikings. See, and then also talking about playoff predictions. Obviously, I want you guys to win. That's obvious. I really don't care who who else wins at the game. But for you guys' sake, I hope the Chiefs win. Because I'd rather you guys play the Chiefs than the Ravens. Why is that? For, for obvious reasons. You guys beat the Chiefs, what? and you guys got blown out by the Ravens. What do you mean? So that, was like early, that was early in the year. Okay. You guys still beat the Chiefs and got blown out by the Ravens. Like, oh, right, bro, you guys they, didn't have, they didn't have Kelsey, remember? Okay. Okay. Or or John. You guys got blown out by the Ravens and beat the Chiefs. So I'd rather you guys play the Chiefs. But that being said, if you guys lose, I'd rather the Ravens win. I'd rather see Lamar Jackson have a chance to win a Super Bowl. You know, so that's where my head's at. Who plays first? They do. Mm. Whatever. So we play at 3.30 West Coast, so Wait. 6.30 Eastern. Where are they even? I have to watch the game somewhere. Like, I have to watch the game, like, in the stadium, like, second half or some shit. Because, like, the, your game, their game ends, your guys starts right then, right? Yeah. I think, yeah. Fuck. Whatever. I was uh, three for four in my, pred- in my predictions. Really, Packers should have won. I would have been four for four. But um, my predictions, Lions. You had the, I saw the thing. You had the same score for like three teams, bro. But I don't, you guys tell me to get scores. I don't know fucking scores, bro. Like, I don't yeah, fuck get scores. scores. Lions. I'm just gonna be a please no twenty four seventeen. You said that like ten times. Lions. Let me think. Let me look. Let me let me look. Let me look. Let me some math, some calculations. All right. Lions. Twenty four. Okay. Lions. Twenty. All right. Here we go. Lions twenty eight. Now you're gonna have, you're gonna have some field goals. You you have some. You're gonna get twenty. Sure. Yeah. You're gonna have some field goals. I feel like he's gonna score like around twenty four points. Is that bad? Yeah, like I don't know. Twenty four. Okay, that's good. Okay, the other two. 
Nah, I'm gonna say Lions. Lions, thirty-one. I'm gonna say Niners. Twenty-eight. Wow, what? A, that'd be a crazy game, just off the yeah. score. That was that crazy game. And I'm gonna say Ravens are gonna win. You know, I don't. It's hard for me to take the Chiefs losing. This Chiefs. I'm gonna take the Ravens anyways, though. Ravens. Thirty. Mm, one or twenty-eight. I'm saying Ravens twenty-eight. Chiefs. Twenty-four. You bet against Patrick Mahomes? I don't bet, but not bet, but you're yeah, right. I don't like I don't like doing that usually. Like it Bills, I took the Chiefs and like Chiefs are winning. There's a good chance the Chiefs win. There's a good chance, you know. I don't know. I just want the Ravens to win. I want to see Lamar. It's a good chance the Chiefs win, though. You know, it depends how the game goes. It depends how the Ravens come out. It's just the Chiefs have been there so many times. The seventh, seventh or sixth time in a row they've been there. Like, they know, they know what they're doing. So, like, you know, it's hard, it's hard to, like, not to think they're going to win. But, yeah, just, don't worry about them. Just worry about the Lions, man. I don't want to go to Vegas. We'll be ready. You guys better be we'll ready. ready. Fuck, bro. Be stressful to watch that shit. <laughs> honestly, honestly, for you guys to win, this is all I gotta tell you. Get 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 the lead for early. Or get the lead in the second, third quarter, get a good lead. Get like a two possession lead in the third quarter, you guys will win. You see uh Chauncey early in the year when he was talking about Debo? Or, yeah, or and now, now now they're playing. To, it, is he gonna yeah. play? He's hurt though. I don't know. Uh, he probably play, but it's NFC Championship. Oh. oh yeah. Um, tell me about your uh, touchdown celebration. Um, did you obviously, see it? I, oh yeah, I obviously didn't know when he did it. But when I'm on social media, I'm like, it reminded me of it. But I didn't yeah. know what. I didn't Before the game, two. I was like, I'm always thinking about you know me and me and Jameer were thinking about celebration. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm gonna hit it. <sighs> if I score, I'm doing it. I didn't know the the second part. That I didn't know. So it was close enough. Terrible. Though. It's close enough. I'm like, damn, I don't know the first part. And then, so Jameer scored first. I thought he was going to do it. And he just didn't do it. I'm like, okay. So that was a nasty, nasty touchdown, by the way. That was a nasty touchdown. That was hard, though. Yeah, that was tough. Uh, he, so he scored. I'm like, he didn't do it. I'm like, bet. I can still do it. And so I didn't know the touchdown was coming. I motioned over. We had to play a different play up. We got to our check because it was double press. But like, like, like a rubber out, boom. Jared throws a perfect ball. I catch it. I'm like, man, it's my chance. I hit it. Hey, I was looking at the wrong camera though. There was the camera was to the left. I was looking at the yeah. Right. Well, you always like you always I'm like. I'm, I'm trying to yeah. look at the right camera. I'm doing it. Boom. If I would score again, I would hit the. You know, he did the flag when he was. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Was, and then uh. boom, I was gonna do that one, but mm-hmm. I had it planned. So this week, if I score in the bay, I already did the schmies, so I can't do that. That's a bay dance. Um, but it's only right, huh? They right. scored the the running back score hit the the um uh-huh. the Troy thing. I'm like, damn, yeah. I hit that. Uh huh. Um, but yeah, you gotta do a bay dance. Um, there's probably different ones out there. I want to ask you that Craig Reynolds touchdown was crazy, crazy call. I love it, bro. You know what's crazy? He wasn't even supposed to be in. Really, bro? Why was he in? <laughs> Bro, we had a different personnel got messed up. <laughs> so we're we're in there, we're um we're calling a play. It was fourth down, so cause but third down we didn't get it. And then we're on the sideline. I'm waiting for Dan to say like go for fourth down. Sure enough, he's like, We're going for it. So they call personnel, I think it said like twelve, whatever. I go in. And then they change it to like twelve Saint, which makes me go to X. Mm-hmm. And I think J Ray go to Z. So I'm at that point they're probably changing the play in the headset. And then Craig comes running on the field. I'm like, damn, okay. And I'm thinking it's one play that we practice, and then it's a different play. I'm like, okay, this, this play works. This is the 12th same play where I motion. So I'm ready to motion. It's just a regular run play. And I'm waiting for Jared to send me. But I see, like, behind me in my peripheral, I see white cleats. I'm like, David and Jameer don't wear white cleats. I'm like, who? I, it was just a quick thought in my head. Like, who's in the backfield? So I'm just going for the motion. He sends me in the motion. I go in my motion. I look back at the play. I see Craig get the ball and a handoff. On the one yard, like he hit that bitch so hard. I'm like, oh my God, Craig, you weren't that bad, huh? He's like, bro, he's like, no one will stop me. I'm like, yeah, I mean, you got that shit crazy. 
And it was, it was the wrong personnel, bro. It was supposed to be a different play. I thought you did on purpose. It was a different play, so it got messed up in transit. Craig got the. I'm, I mean, I'm happy. It ha- I'm happy it happened for him. Shit, sure, me too. Got it. But it was because crazy. usually when he's in there, you see his dance. Yeah, what was his dance? What was that from? You think he been waiting to hit that for like all year? <laughs> like, what the hell? Is that? Um, he was, was so, so happy. Yeah, I'm happy for him, man. I'm happy for the guy. But it's like I thought he did it on purpose. I thought you guys did it on purpose. I'm like, because usually when he's in there, it's a pass. I'm like, oh. I saw him in the backfield. I'm the other pass. That's what I'm saying, bro. Like, let me tell you that too. Like, I'm the other. So the defense was probably thinking that too. Craig did it to pass, huh? Yeah. So the defense was probably thinking that too. Fucking wide open. <laughs> I'm like, oh, shit. He hit that bitch so hard. He went right to the back of the line and <laughs> bop. I'm like, damn, bro. <laughs> well, that shit got out of running. Bro. Okay. Well, okay. He hit the little cellar. It was funny. He looked like a little bowling ball. It's just funny. My bro, it's so funny. <laughs> For the knock around sunglasses moment of the week, use code SPB for twenty percent off for new customers. Exclusions apply. Um, so, I mean, what was your key moment in the game for you um, that you think was like a turning point? Um, let us know. Break it down. Uh, obviously, the pick from Derek Barnes. Shout out to Derek, first pick of his career, biggest play of his career. It came at the couldn't you know couldn't happen at a better time for him. I'm over mm-hmm. here looking like damn because before that. You know, we usually on offense, when we get the ball in four minutes, we usually end the game on offense, like for the most part. I think that the only other time that the defense, you know, won it for us or was on the field last was Minnesota at Minnesota when we won the division. Mm -hmm. Um, But for the most part, like when offense is out there, we usually, you know, as an offense, we take pride in finishing the game. So it was third and like 12 or something. I had a choice for I freaking went in instead of going out. So I kind of I fucked that up and then we had to punt it, whatever. Um and then Derek came up with the pick. I was so happy. But besides that play, I would say the third down I had was huge. Um, it was like third and fourteen or the something. Curl third up. and thirteen. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm the I'm on the backside. I have like an eighteen yard curl, and I'm running. I'm like I caught one of these versus the the Cowboys too. And we ended up with, uh, scoring on that two minute drill at the end of the game. Um, I'm running. I'm like I feel like Jerry's gonna come to me. I don't know why. Even though we do have a dagger on that back on the front side, where Jared throws a hell of a. Da- the hell out of a dagger, especially to Josh. I'm like, he might be throwing the dagger. But in the back of my head, I'm like, he might come back to me. So I'm running my route. I'm like, I know it's third and 14. The dude is, like, sitting at, like, 15 yards. I'm like, shit. I didn't even get my depth. I literally ran, like, 15 yards. I come back to the ball. I'm like, when I catch him, I know I didn't get it. So I catch it. I try to turn up. I see, I think, Levante David hit me. I have, like, the ball on one arm. Or if you would have hit the ball, it would have came out. It was, like, mm. literally just barely in one arm. I push, lean over. I look left. I'm in front of the first down. I pour on the ground like first down. Mm, we ended up scoring, yeah. but that yeah. play was huge. Um, but I did sell on some third downs. Like I had a drop on one, and then the, at the end of the game, but that was a big play for us. We had a lot of big plays, man. A lot of big plays. Knock around sunglasses has partnered with the NFL to create custom sunglasses for the teams you love to cheer for. Whether you tune in casually or plan your whole week schedule around Sunday, these shades let you rep your team colors no matter the occasion. All thirty-two teams plus Super Bowl fifty-eight and multiple frame styles. NFL collection. Available it's for pre-order now. Use code SPB 20% off for new customers. Exclusions apply. So I know you guys have been waiting for who the guest is. You guys are all ready for it. Um, our special guest for today, the one and only Calvin Johnson, Megatron, uh, 2007, second overall pick, three-time All-Pro. Um, shoot, you name it. Class of 2021 NFL Hall of Fame inductee. Congratulations. And co-founder of Primitive Performance. Um, Thank you for being on the show. We got a bunch of questions for you. Um, I got some questions for you personally. I know my brother might too. Um, but shoot, we'll let my brother start start off right now. Yeah, man. Uh, nice to meet you. Um, I know my brother just mentioned uh, permanent performance. Uh, tell me more about it. Like, I haven't heard much about it, so let me know. Let the let the fans know on the podcast what it's about. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, I just started with the name Primitive. While we came up with the name Primitive, just for thousands of years, people have been using. Uh, cannabinoids. So by definition, by nature, it is primitive. And so with primitive performance, that's our CBD line. And uh, we call it a primitive performance. We're just really trying to help athletes uh, like ourselves be able to be able to recover and get back to the for, uh, get back to the field as soon as possible, so that that it, that it affects their performance in a positive manner. So we came up with a uh, t- we started with products that you know we use while we play, uh, which are rehydration formulas and uh, topicals. We use a lot of them. We had the heating, the cooling type stuff. You had all kind of rehydration drinks that you use. But we was like, man, what what if we can add our have some kind of anti-inflammatory uh, component to these uh, to these products that we use that aren't there right now. 
which will effectively get us back on the field and uh, help us uh, to obviously live a better quality of life. So it's not just for obviously top tier athletes, for those that have those bumps and bruises, uh, rheumatoid arthritis. But I think what makes our product special is that we use nanotechnology. So we're using pharmaceutical grade technology uh, with with, uh, cannabinoids. So what it does is just decreases the particle size. So it basically um, bypasses the intestinal system, system and gets into the bloodstream making it more viable, available, making the medicine basically more usable uh, to the patient. So that's how long, how long has it us. been out? Uh, we still we dropped the brand this year in 23, but we've been in formulation of the product for the last couple of years. So we finally got it right. We dropped the brand in 23. And what's exciting is that we're going through what is called NSF for sport certification, yeah. which allows us to, which allows our product to be used by collegiate and professional athletes. Yeah, okay. that was my next question. I was about to ask, can we take it? Like, you know, all the rules <laughs> so, with the so, uh, yeah. uh, to your testing, point, you take anything and it gets red flag. I'm like, can't to take your, nothing to, nowadays. To your point, I was, um, I actually had a conversation with Goodell, but the NFL has not sanctioned uh, CBD yet. You know, so hopefully uh, with the next CBA, that's something that they um, that they disregard, not disregard, but don't test for. As long with right. I know they, um, uh, they stepped up the measuring I guess you can have more in your system as far as THC goes as well and whatnot. But I think as more uh, education comes out, more research comes out, I think that, that helps sway the decision. Okay. okay. I'm about to definitely yeah. look into it. Yeah. My first time hearing about it, so we'll see. Yeah, our product, in one area, our product has no THC in it. I know that's the thing that, that uh, the NFL tests for, but yeah, our product doesn't have any uh, THC. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, shoot. Uh, let's get right into some questions. What's the. First Super Bowl that you remember, Calvin? First Super Bowl I remember. Uh, vividly was when uh, Atlanta was playing in the Super Bowl against uh, – who were we playing against that year? Was it the uh, Broncos maybe? We might have been playing against the Broncos in the Super Bowl. I think that's uh, – ooh. And my, I had to look back and see when that was. Yeah. It might have been like in the nineties, but that's when I became, you know, I love, you know, our team back then. But that's when I became like a Terrell Davis fan and all that. Okay. So you said that we are you from Atlanta? Is that where you're from? Yeah, I'm from Georgia. Yeah, I'm from okay, Georgia. Georgia. Grew up in South Atlanta. Yeah, yeah yes, sir. And then, are you what, a, a Broncos fan? No, so no, I grew up. Falcons. I grew up a Atlanta Falcons fan, but obviously when, they, when we played the Broncos, I didn't know much about them. But I fell in love with you know Terrell Davis, and then I started following that team. You know, you had Rod Smith, Ed McCaffrey, right. um, Steve Atwater. You know, obviously Elway. You know, you got all those dudes. I, you know, I was in love with all those guys, man, back in the day. Plus, they had a dope uniform. Yeah. Um, this might be a dumb question, but I know you went to Georgia Tech. They they didn't run the wing T when you were there, right? Or did they? No, no, I missed that. Like no. they, that happened. Oh, okay. They started doing that like two years after I left. I um I had oh, okay. Coach Chan okay. Gailey when I was there. All right. Okay, I just wanted to know that. Um, what's your favorite non home stadium playing? So not Detroit. Oh man, that's tough. I love Chicago and I love Green Bay. You know, you like Chicago? To take the two, uh, really? I, I, don't like Chicago. I just like Chicago because we always played them first game of the season. It's really more so the crowd because that field is garbage. You know, they, they, garbage. they, don't, they don't care. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a city ran, so that's why. But Garbage. Um, the field is We upgraded. We upgraded since then. Bay, Green Bay. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, we did. No, we did. Garbage. We did. Garbage. We did. <laughs> Well, Green Bay, man, just with the history alone, you know, and going there and man, having played Brett Favre there, uh, obviously Aaron Rodgers, and, you know, I don't think we ever beat Brett Favre there, but we, we beat Aaron Rodgers a couple of times. But, you know, getting a dub there on that field, you know, that's always cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, so Jameer Gibbs went to Georgia Tech. You know, he went to Bama, but he also went to Georgia Tech. I tell him all the time, he loves to claim Bama. I'm like, why don't you just claim Georgia Tech? That's a good school. Like, some dudes came out of there. <laughs> He's like, dude, what do you mean? I claim both. I said, you can't claim both, bro. You got to choose one. <laughs> I tell him, Georgia Tech's a good school. Like, come on. You gotta let, we got to let Jameer know. Hey, 100% Georgia Tech's a great school. I just, I'm not mad at him, though, because, like, man, <laughs> great. the triple option killed the program. Like, we're just now starting to recover from that. Like, and it's, mm-hmm. dude, the triple option's been gone for, like, almost a handful of years now. But um, mm-hmm. Jameer, man, like, we'll take all we can get there, man, 100%, dude. That dude, right. <laughs> uh, dude is a ball. And, you know, my homie, um, he was a running back coach, Deshard Choice at Georgia Tech. He's the one that brought T-Choice in. Uh, or not T-Choice. He's the one that brought Jamar in to uh, Georgia Tech, you know. So, um, and now he's over at, obviously, uh, he at Texas now. But, you know, no, nah, he um, Gibbs, he graced us with his presence for a little while there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's a, he, he balled out. I think he said he broke, like, some records. 
like rushing or something crazy his first two years. He was going stupid. Yeah. Um, who's your favorite musical artist? So who do you like? Who do you listen to most? Man, I, I, I'm I'm heavily biased towards Atlanta rappers. You know, I, you know, I love. You know, when I play my game day, you know, I was listening to the Ti. I was listening to Jeezy. Um, okay. you, you know, now, I mean, those are like really heavy on my, on my playlist. Obviously back then I had like, you know, Jay-Z and Kanye and stuff like that in there, but, um, you know, two chains, uh, any, anything Atlanta dog, I don't know. I wish my guy, I wish Outkast would just do something like go on a tour or something and just bring something back. They always supported us when we were in college, they come to the yeah. games, like mm -hmm. Andre three stacks and all that. You know, so love those guys, but you know, I'm an old soul. So I, after that, you know, even the new generation of rap really kind of, it's kind of missing me. You know, I can't really right. understand what everybody be saying. <laughs> yeah, I feel that sometimes. Um, what's the hardest hit you've ever taken? Um, taken London two? Fletcher, man. London Fletcher. Y'all y'all know London Fletcher? Y all, y all, y all, I've heard I, of him. I, I don't really London know him London Fletcher, he, London Fletcher probably like 5'7". But London Fletcher probably 5'7", 250. I was running a drag across the middle. Yeah, I was running a drag across the middle. And um, you know, I was going to, I was up in the air, you know, feet off the ground, kind of like in the Jordan look, the little Jordan uh -huh. you know, pose thing. Mm -hmm. Man, I mean, I swear I got hit five yards back the other way. And I, <laughs> I didn't want to play no more that day. I was just like, like my whole, like rib cage, my whole insides, they were just like out of order, it felt like. Right. Yeah, I just like I, just, <laughs> I went to the sidelines. Like I feel like I told my coach, I was like, "Man, I think I'm good on this game." <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I meant to ask you. You were at the last two playoff games when you were playing. Was Ford Field ever? Have you ever seen it that electric? Because I know my brother came to the first one. Um, mm -hmm. I guess the Rams. He didn't come last week, but have you ever seen a stadium like that? The one time the stadium was like that, and so they, they I don't think they were collecting the decibels um, back then. We were playing in Chicago in 2011. We are started the season like five and zero. Oh. This is our first time we went to the playoffs that year, and we were, Chicago was coming. In. I feel like they were like they had a good record too. They're coming in. It's Monday night football, and this game was like just like it made all the you know noise about this game because both teams are really good. Man, we caused 11 false starts that game with the crowd. Damn. So like, and then so funny like the pyrotechnics and stuff like. The whole stadium, like they, they do a better job now because, like, because of this, like the whole stadium, like you couldn't even see across the other side because it was so smoky. Like, I, like the, the power, they they've done something now where they be popping off all the fireworks and all that stuff yeah. to make all the smoke go out. Mm. But they just have the fire coming up out the little things when you're running out in the tunnel and all that stuff just sat in the whole uh, <laughs> the whole uh, stadium. Yeah. So, um, but that was the loudest I ever heard. Like my ears hurt. But I feel like, yeah, the last like, – I'm not, I'm not sure, bro, like, if it was the first playoff game or the second because the first playoff game had more energy, like, an hour before the game, yeah. half the stadium full, everybody on their feet. You know, you could, like, everybody like a kid, like, inside right. jumping up and down. Like, you could feel the energy. The second game, like, in the first quarter, I feel like it got there. Like, y'all were on defense, and, like, it just started to get loud and towels were going. Yeah, and I feel like – I forget which one, if it was the first game or second one to set the record, but either way, man, my ears was hurting. I know next time it's a home game, I'm bringing some goddamn earplugs. Yeah, I, I try to tell my brother, health. bring the earplugs. I try to tell everybody. <laughs> Wait, I'm on. Health, which one was louder, the nah, first one or second up, one? Though, straight up, though, like, Four Fields is the loudest environment I've ever, ever played in besides the old Minnesota Stadium. I don't know what the new one's like, but I didn't get the chance to play in there. The old one was like a like – a, old ass cheap sorry dome and it was but it was just like they used to pump sound in there they got fined for that too so that oh, might, okay. might have been why it's so loud but between that spot and and, and four field those are the loudest two stadiums i've ever i've ever played in what about seattle because i know you played against the legion of boom and they said that was yep. super loud when i played in seattle it wasn't that loud i can't lie i played in seattle one time where we were in the end zone and it was just like just can't hear shit. Like you just got no signals. Like we just had, to, we were just going off signals that game, but we knew it. This is so loud. This is like right when they had maybe won the championship or something like that. But I just vividly remember being in the end zone, probably like inside the five yard line, and just looking at the quarterback, just mouthing, just like and it's like, it's like what's right. the signal like? <laughs> <laughs> it's like? Can't do it. Um, who's the best player you ever played with? Besides, you know, obviously you. The best player I've played with, um, 
Man, I, shoot, that's tough. I played with a lot of great guys, but, you know, Matthew, man, that was my, that was my wingman. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or vice yeah. versa, I was his wingman, whatever, man, because uh, whatever he did, whatever he dished up, you know, I just tried to make it work. You know, my coach always right. tell me, man, when I came in, it wasn't like I was getting opportunities all the time because, you know, we just – stuff wasn't right all the time over there. But he just like, man, whatever opportunity you get is a blessing, so try to take advantage of it. So I just kept that mindset. Any ball thrown my way, just try to make a play on it. Right. No, you guys came in together? Uh, who? Um, Matthew? You, you and St- yeah. No, Matthew came in. Um, I think he came in in my third year. My first year, my second year. Okay, we, we went on 16 my second year. He got drafted after my second year. So my third year was his first year. Okay. But then he got hurt his whole first year. He didn't play his whole first year. He got hurt, missed half of his second year, I think, something like that. So – his third year on, then we were rocking. Mm. I gotta ask, you played with Reggie Bush, right? Yeah, that was cool. How, how was that? Reggie was great, man. He was a leader. He brought a spark to our offense. I, just, you know, I just, you know, I wish we. It was great having us both on the field because it made it hard for defense defenses to uh, honor honor both right. of us. Right. You know, so anytime um, uh, Reggie and I were on the same side of the field, it, it was kind of scary. But no, it was cool to play at Reggie because I was always, a, you know, he was. A, He's my favorite all-time college football player, like yeah, hands down. Beast. Yeah. All right, relax on one. Um, <laughs> who's the uh, the biggest trash talk you ever played against? And like, if they say anything funny, you remember? I'm like, man, a lot of guys didn't talk a lot of trash, man. I'm trying to think who talked trash. Most of like, mostly like the D linemen talk trash, like, like Jared yeah. Allen, man. Goodness gracious, like, you know, he's. He, I think I don't know. I think he might be up for the Hall of Fame this year, but like. The Vikings, when we played the Vikings, man, like they were some of the most like their their D line was just ruthless, bro. And Jared Allen was like the ringleader, and he would just be t- talking so dirty to our line. I'd be feeling bad for our line, and I'm like, let's fight back. But now, like, as far as yeah. me, like me just playing somebody, man, a lot of guys didn't really talk trash, man, because you know I didn't talk. I'm just out here working. And they right. know that I'm, I'm I'm coming. I'm gonna bring you for sixty plays. So you want to talk? Go ahead and talk. Cause I'm I'm still coming. Yeah. Okay. That's kind of how Max Crosby was, bro. When we played him, he was. Ta- just kept talking. We don't really talk on offense, but he was talking crazy. We were just like, All right, go ahead. Like, Panay didn't talk back. I mean, Panay would talk back, but he's more about his business. Like, yeah, yeah. 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 He seemed like yeah. Um, yeah. you guys talking trash? Nah, bro. I don't say anything unless someone says something to me. Like, I yeah. just be playing. But if someone says something to me, then I'll say something back. But. Like if you don't say anything to me, like last game against the Bucks, I don't, I didn't even say a word to any of their players. They didn't say a word to me. Um, yep. What Rams? I knew, you know, I knew one of the guys I went to high school with, number thirty-seven. So we talked back and forth, but we didn't say anything. Um, there was like a few games, like Cowboys. The dude was talking. Uh, mm-hmm. Packers, number thirty-seven. He was talking crazy, but for the most part, like they don't really say much, like because I don't have time to really be talking. I'm trying to focus on the play. What's next? So I'm, I don't really talk right. about that. Yeah. Exactly. How about you? Yeah, no, same. People don't talk that much. Uh, mainly DBs don't really talk that much. It's usually like D linemen. Uh, mm-hmm. I always see them talking, chirping, like especially <laughs> like during TV timeouts. Yeah, they, they're always talking. So that one, it's crazy. Um, next question: List your all-star secondary. So like basically two corners, safeties, and mm-hmm. nickel. If you want, if you want to add that in there. All right. Um, C will would be one. Uh, other corner, I'm gonna put over there Al Harris, um, Nickel, oh, um, uh, Antoine Winfield, great mm, Antoine we, Winfield. We just, I just played his son, that's crazy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, safeties, oh man, dang, that's tough. Ed Reed and ooh, 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 ooh. Mm. Troy. Troy Palomalu. I thank you. That's a good one. That's a great one. That's a I was great thinking one. about that. Yeah. That's FC. a great one. Oh Did you God. play against Champ Bailey? Yeah. yeah. How was he? Played I always wondered. Champ. Like I heard a lot about him, but I never really watched seen any of his. Champ was good, man. Champ had long arms. I hate corners with long arms too. He had long arms, man, but um, I did him dirty in in, in, um, in Denver one time. I had to, man. That's from the home team. I had to get him on. Yeah. <laughs> I had to do him dirty. Yeah. But, no, nah, nah, champ, man, I feel like I played against all the old heads almost, man. Um, the real oh, 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 You know what? You know who, who talked the most trash? Um, D'Angelo Hall. 
Really? Yeah, oh, that's that's a dude from uh in that video yeah, with D Hop, right? Who we broke his ankle. That's him, right? Yeah, the in the dude, video. Uh, he was on the the Redskins, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was talking yeah. to D Hop, and D Hop did a dumb move when he hurt his ankle. That's him, right? Oh, I yeah, missed it. I missed it. <laughs> yeah, that is him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. D Hop talked so much trash, but he's he just like I say, when people talk trash, you just get you just energize me. Right. You, know, you put the crosshairs on yourself at that point. Right. Mm-hmm. So facts. Heck yeah. I was isn't talking the, to um. Go ahead. Isn't that the dude that had like four pi- or some crazy like three pick sixes in a game, or that, four picks or something? That wouldn't surprise me because he likes to jump stuff. Yeah, he jumped me a couple times. He, he got me a couple times, but we ended up just leaving out of there with the last laugh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shoot! Now you got to build your yeah build a perfect receiver. So hands, um, intelligence, route running, speed, and size. I'll remind you. So hands, intelligence, you can start with those. So you said build your say that again? Per, build your perfect receiver, like the best all around receiver. Just like from the from those attributes you mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um footwork. Gotta be on point. Obviously you gotta have hands. I'm saying um, you can like name the players. So it's like, I like name the players player with, with the Yeah, oh, like the best okay. hands, okay. intelligence, route right. running, speed and size. Got you, got you, got you, got you. All right. Um, well, I, you you're definitely on that list, man. You you're definitely on that list as far as top receivers in the league, bro. That's that's Appreciate hands now. You know, you. you got your All Pro, which is well deserved. You know, Appreciate they stuff you obviously on the on the Pro Bowl. That's, that's, that's all crazy. good. But now you got what you really what what, what really count though. So that, that's what's up. Um, let's see who else we got out here balling. Like my man C D Lamb, he, he he plays good ball. Um. I'm not. I'm not able to like say watch the film to see how these guys right. play every play, like how they right. block and all that stuff necessarily. They don't really show all that on 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 film. You just really get to see the plays that they're making on balls and whatnot. I love like I love the guys from LSU, Justin Jefferson and um, and Jamar Chase. You know, seems like Jamar might have been you know had some you know health struggles you know late where he can't hadn't really been to get after it, but. Jamar, man, those guys who stay healthy and stay on the field, you know, they, it's hard for them not to put up numbers. Right, right. Um, let's see. I, I mean, I grew up watching Devontae. He came into Green Bay, he's a young buck, you know, dropping everything, and now he blossomed into a beautiful receiver, you know. So seeing yeah. that evolution of guys, you know, that I love. I love watching that, you know, just smooth and, and watching him, you know, operate. I love that. He, he does a great job. Same thing with um Stefan, you know, obviously <laughs> they had their struggles in the playoffs yeah. there. But, you know, Stefan, the same thing, you know, so I watched him in Minnesota, you know, he had those growing pains and he blossomed into a solid receiver himself. Um, AJ AJ Brown, love that kid, man. Um Devontae Smith, watched yeah. him since he was in Alabama. He's always been a stud. Um trying to think. So you mm. named you named a bunch of good dudes already. I know. I always feel bad when I, you know, I get, I get, get asked a name because I'm like, I'm gonna leave some folks out. Like, and then, nah, <laughs> I was yeah. feelings. Nah, I was sometimes. like, damn, like, come on, man. What's there's, up? I feel like there's so many good receivers in the league now. I was telling, I was telling some of my teammates, like, you think about the receivers, then you go to like DBs. Like, I can name so many more good receivers than I can good DBs. Like, oh yeah, one hundred percent. Like 100%. every team has one or two really good receivers. Damn near. Yeah. You got. I mean, you have to. You have to in this day and age. If you're going to compete, if you yeah. want. To, I mean, if you want to go, you got to either have one or two. Or you got to have like a stable. Right. You know, and I feel like what's good about um, Detroit and like y'all got a stable of receivers. And I give you this this compliment too. And this goes more so towards Randall L. Man, it's just y'all got like four guys that contribute on the you know every game. And one guy might. Hey, I mean, you're gonna lead the way, but. One guy might have like you know four catches. One guy might have two. One right. might have, guy might have one target, but that one target might be it for a touchdown. But I just credit you know y'all you guys for being on point and being ready when your numbers call because it ain't easy when when you living with that kind of like uh, uh, volatility when you're getting the ball this many times and then you might be getting it this many times and right. stay in it and stay focused. So that just all boils to obviously what your coach is doing and just the culture of the team over there, man. Your guys is just. Guys, it's, it's not like, and I, I say this with the most, you know, I ain't trying to, I ain't trying to demean anybody over there. Just like I feel like, I mean, me and my guys at the game, like now, like this, feel like, like we had some talent on our team. We had stars on our team. Not that y'all don't have stars on your team, but it's like you guys have guys on your team that are like, 
just starting to emerge into their own star star yeah, right, you right. know which is very cool to watch and and see happen here like if it's right in front of our eyes before the season so it's it's, it's, it's it's pretty cool to see um you guys just you know just bloom you know over the last I, i'm proud i'll tell you man uh, we we fucking proud dog yeah appreciate proud it as hell, yeah. yes sir hey Do was you, there ever a chance of you um unretiring nah, nah thought of it never <laughs> No, it's just, bro, it's just my um, my body just told me no. Where the organization okay. was, we we're in rebuilding mode. I wasn't getting traded. Like, it just, right. no, I was done. Done. You got something to say to me? Yeah, do you, do you still live in Detroit or no? Yep. Yeah, business yeah. keeps me here. You know, I was um about to move back home. All my family's in Georgia for the most part, but uh, business keeps me here in Michigan. So you've been in Detroit ever since you played there? Or did you move back? Yeah. Yeah, really? yeah, I don't, I don't get acclimated with the cold. You know, I snowboard and stuff. I do all kind of winter sports now. <laughs> oh, oh wow, that's crazy. I mean, legends. So like, every like you said, business is booming out here. I, I get it. <laughs> you can do the same. I mean, it's hard to leave where you you have a lot of kids. You, and you'll see, you know, and I don't. You, you're, I you know, you head in it. You know, focused on, you know, doing your thing, but. I mean, you make a lot of connections out here, you know, and it's, I know right. you're probably well connected from, you know, you, you out to Cali and whatnot, but, you know, those connections are going to last a lifetime, you know, in some in some situations, you know. So, um, and then you with this team, you know, and especially as this organization continues to bloom, you know, you, that, that relationship right there is going to obviously last you a long time. So just keep balling, man. Just keep balling. You know, just like I say, you just know, you know, just – Keep keep doing what you're doing, man, and, and immortalize yourself. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying, to, try, I'm trying to keep up with you. Come on, someone, come on, some, me. someone told me your first three years, like you, I didn't know you didn't have Matt Matthew Stafford your first uh, what two or three years, but they said yeah. your fourth. They said your fourth year you went crazy. So I'm going to my fourth year. Mm -hmm. I'm like. I don't know if I can keep up with Calvin going into this fourth year. I'm nah, man, you 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 are well ahead of the curve. I'm gonna have to do something crazy magically. <laughs> <laughs> we get an extra game. They got this extra game. Everyone's trying to catch your your record. They still can't do it. I'm like, he did it in 16 <laughs> games. All these dudes, 17 games, still can't get the yards. I'm like, I'm telling you, bro, <laughs> yeah, that's 2000 crazy. ain't nothing to play with. Bro, it's just I had um, it was it we had a three year span where we went off for like, you know, like. 3,000 plus yards or, or no, it was like three years span. We went for like 5,000 yards or something like that in like three years. Like we, we went ham in three years. Me and Matthew was just sinking on, he was just throwing me everything. Yeah. But um, my friend, like I said the first couple of years, like my first year I went for 700, I think my rookie year. And then my second year I had like 12 or 13 or something like that. My third year I, I lost like four games and I went for like 900. They actually, <laughs> I ain't gonna do. That. I ain't gonna do it now. We ain't gonna talk about that right now. Yeah, went for nine. Like, I went for nine eighty five. Talk about what? No, tell us. Let it out. Man. Talk to Let it out. Let it out. I'm, uh, see, nah, man. I'm, I'm working. No, nah, I'm working myself back into good graces right now. Okay, Come okay. On, I feel bro. you. Come on. Man. I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> <laughs> How many go for your your fourth year? I'm gonna have to look this up. Hold on, Calvin. Hmm. I don't. I, after, after, I feel like after after that. Third year, I think I hit like a thousand every year from that, a thousand plus every year from there. I don't know. Yeah. Do you think you still suit up today if you had to for a game? I look, I look good out there, but but I tell you, I feel like, bro, I feel like every day. I feel like every day. I feel like my knee. I feel like I got this sharp pain in my knee. I feel like I got like I feel like my Achilles got like two threads left. Like, really? <laughs> I was like, man, damn, nah, man, I ain't about to. I be, I be, I, I do my camps and stuff like that, bro. I feel like I just play a full game the next day. I'd be up to. I wake up in the morning dragging my feet across the floor. I'm like, damn! I just I'm, I just did a couple of drills for the kids today. Yeah, <laughs> eleven nah, eleven hundred, eleven hundred your fourth year, sixteen hundred after that, nineteen hundred. Yeah, it's over with. It's over, <laughs> and and nobody getting that record. I'm sorry, like, nah, it's it's, it, it's too attainable now, man. You see how like I feel like the last three years somebody's been flirting with it or last flirting with it, but years. flirting with it, but never hit it. Yeah, with, shit, the, with the extra game. If if my man didn't get hurt this year, um, but look, you did it in Tyreek, sixteen games. So yeah, if he he yeah, left, yeah. he get you know without one game, that's just how you did it. <laughs> so, like, it's, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, it was crazy. I didn't expect to get it. My coach actually, Sean Jefferson. I was fortunate to have a um, a player coach. You know, he'll push he'll push the hell out of me. But uh, I think it was halfway through the season. He told me he's like, man. You know, uh, if you you average like 150 yards every game, you can get that record. I was like, 
Like, man, I ain't thinking about that, dog. I'm trying right. to win some games. And he just, like, kept on pushing me. I, I, mean, I got, like, 200. And he was like, shoot, you know, you made it a little better. I said, you know, you average, like, 130 yards every game. I was like, and he got me thinking about it a little bit. So you kind of put a goal out there, you know, kind of help, you know, obviously setting goals for yourself and stuff. Yeah. It wasn't a goal of mine, but obviously something else to focus on, you know, and when everything gets mundane during the season. Whose record did you break when you broke it? Uh, Jerry. Jerry okay. Rice. Mm. Mm-hmm. I think no I one's... remember where I was when you broke it too. You you gave your ball, you gave the ball to your dad, right? Yeah, that was dope. Yeah, that was yeah I, remember, dad, I'm, I remember where I was watching. That's crazy. How many yards you did you get know, about that moment? My mom, my mom was mad because she wasn't down there. <laughs> 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 it's because she was out talking somewhere to one of her friends. <laughs> she wasn't paying attention. Right. But now, what did you say? How many yards? How many did I break? Yeah, by? yeah. How many yards did you break it by? By a lot. Uh, I feel like it was like I feel like he had like um, I got I think I finished with nineteen sixty four. I feel like he was like eighteen, mm. almost nineteen hundred, something like that. And I like no- now I think about it all the time. Like damn, I like. I could have easily had 2,000. I'm like, I just think about all the drop passes I had that season. <laughs> yeah. Man. No one's gotten Eric Dickerson's record either, huh? No. Like AP got close? Tough. Got close? That's AP tough. was like yeah. eight yards away or something. Yeah. Crazy. Some things are hard That's to break. Tough. Yeah. And watching AP in his heyday, bro, playing against him, it was amazing to watch, but it was, it was hell to play against. Mm-hmm. You know, it was tough. Yeah. But, oh, man, to see him, him, somebody like him almost break it, I'm like, I don't know who's going to break it. I ain't seen nobody running like him, run as hard as that dude and just yeah. carry a team like that. That dude, that dude yeah. right there. And it's more pass-heavy nowadays. So that, mm-hmm. might be fun. Yep. that might be set. Here's a question for both you guys. In your prime, you and my brother set on the Detroit Lions, who's catching more passes in the game? Who's catching more passes in the game? Yeah. <sighs> Uh, I, honestly, I'm a Rob might, you know, you're going to catch he's, all the, yeah, he's going to go outside, for more yards. He's going to go gonna for catch all, I'm gonna have my, my yard is probably gonna be like 15, 16 average. Right. But he gonna yeah, like average is going to be game. down. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to catch all the, hey, it all depends on who he's getting that yak. You know, I'll be looking at my average. I'll be like, good. like last game I had like eight, uh, nine catch for 77. I said, damn, that's a shitty average. Fuck. <laughs> but then, but something like Shaka, you have big averages, like 15 or 20 average sometimes. I checked your games. Yeah. So I mean, some games, and some games I'm like. Like yeah. you can't get ten yards a catch. That's embarrassing. Like I'm like, damn, you can't get a first down a catch. I'd be like, damn. Sometimes you, you moving the chains though. I mean, all yeah, all in perspective. Like you look at your Calvin's yards per catch is ridiculous. Like that's a true true X. Like I don't know how many dudes you have nowadays doing that. Like most dudes nowadays, shoot, Justin Jefferson's still doing it. Um, but like a bunch Tyreek's probably one of the only other ones that have a high high yards per catch. The rest of them is like twelve, thirteen, eleven. I think it's because did you how much slot did you play when you were playing, bro? Man, that's when. So when I when we put up them big yards for those three years, I was talking about. I started. I was playing a lot of slot there. Okay. Coach moved me because they had me outside. They can just you know try and go out defense me. Put the you know linebacker, the corner, and the safety on me and just t- take me out of the game. So he put me in the slot. Had me crossing the field the whole time, bro. I was eating when they put me in the slot. Yeah. I also hurt my like my last two years. Like we we, we got a new different uh, new head coach and coordinator. I love. I had. I had. Um, Coach Caldwell. He was. He was wonderful. But like the coordinator, he didn't use me in the slot no more. He just put me back out there at the X. You know. So. Right. You know, I was able. I was still able to get like a thousand yards and whatnot. But like, I just know, like, when you're in that slot, man, you have options. You got the option routes. Right. You got options on you know how to how to defeat your man. You got so much space to work with. It's just like you got all this space to use. Like, and I love. That's why I love. Like, you you have like a veteran quarterback like you got. Yeah. Y'all build that connection, man. It's just. Like you, you just dominate like you've been doing in there. Right. I have, an, I have another question yeah. uh, real quick. I've seen a picture of like you getting viced in the red zone. <laughs> How many times does that happen? Was that only that one time or did it happen more more often? That probably happened to me like three times in my career. Okay. Because I've never yeah. seen them before. That's yeah. crazy. It happened twice in that game and then it happened in another game as well. I don't remember the other game, but yeah, I, think that, I don't know if that was a playoff game or not. It was the Saints, right? The picture was it, was it against the Saints? Were they had Rams? Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought it was Rams. I'm tripping. I know I had one. The one of them definitely against the Saints. Yeah. When you scored, you always dunked it. Was that your celebration, or every now and until then? Until they told us, until they told us that we couldn't dunk no more. Yeah, I'm about Jimmy to Graham. say. It. Was it because of you <laughs> yeah, or Jimmy Graham? 
I think Jimmy Graham messed it up for everybody. Yeah, you know, he used right. to hang on the on the goalpost. I'm just out mm-hmm. here trying to do all kind of cool 360 or do some Michael Jordan type stuff. Right. And he over here hanging on the goalpost, making them all online, messing up for everybody. Mm-hmm. We couldn't see y'all could do everything now. Y'all could do all the celebrations. It was cool as hell. Hey man, we was we was they, they used to call it the no fun league. So they used to, they used to, they used to let us do. We used to get flagged for celebrating and all that. It was crazy. We still can't do nothing, man. I got. I don't even talk about it, man. <laughs> you just got fined. Getting, getting fined for all type of stuff. Like I can't even just be myself. It's a fine every time I do anything. I'm, like, I'm, done. I'm just gonna hand the ball to the ref. I'm gonna do the O Barry. That's what they call it, the Barry Sanders. Yeah. Right. Mm. Um. Shoot. Where are we at now? Um. Shoot. I want. I wanted to ask you the 0 16 year with uh that you went was Dan. Dan was on that team, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, I've tried to tell people that. People always ask me, what's it like playing for Dan? What's it like playing for Dan? I'm like, well, I probably got that question three, 30 times already. I'm like, I don't Man, know. It's, it's all I really know is it's the same dude every day. Like, it's just the kind of guy he is. His storytelling is crazy. He, I don't know how he's able to, like, come up with stories and relate it to the game. Like, he just, you know, he has good – he's just – Good at well, doing I, mean, it. I don't know. The dude was a solid example, man. He, uh, I mean, he, I think he had like one shoulder when we was, uh, and he was like Robocop had a thing. He was still starting. We had other tight ends, but, you know, he was going out here and, and manhandling dude. Dude has like country strength, country strong, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And, you know, just being able to, you know, be productive and, and obviously be a limb down, you know, I think that's what garnered a lot of respect from a lot of the team from him at the time, you know, just seeing somebody go out there and do that. So, um, obviously, seeing his matriculation, he, you know, went on to play somewhere else and then become a co-interim coach and watching him grow. And then just obviously, you know, when he came to Detroit, he was like, holy crap, you know, this is real. You know, I'm going to bite your kneecaps off. Holy crap, is that real? Right. You know, just to see the, <laughs> the growth of, of you guys. And I feel like last year watching you guys, um, like halfway through the season, I don't know what it was. It just seemed like something clicked. you know, just from watching from the outside. And he was like, everybody just got it. I don't know what it was. It's just like, boom. And from that point, it's almost just been like, you know, a steady matriculation upwards. So it's, it's, it's been fun watch, watching the growth, um, obviously, of Dan um, from, you know, when we, when, we, when we played to where he is now, but just the team that he's leading. Yeah. Um, I'm, I actually want to tell both you guys this. Nimi, I didn't even think about this. Or you. When you know they say you got mossed, like that's a thing, you got mossed? Mm-hmm. What, how was it? Was that a thing when you were playing? Like you were mossing dudes? Because – I feel like yeah. you did you did what getting mossed, you did it better than what he what they say getting mossed is. <laughs> but I always thought like I always thought of Calvin Moss and dudes. Like, I never thought of Moss actually Moss and dudes. He was running, catching the over the shoulder, running past you. You were the one actually Moss and dudes. So I'm I always wonder why is it called Moss and not like Calvin Johnson. You know what I mean? You know, it's funny, man. I always I mean when I when I got to the league, I was like, Man, I wanna do this right, I'm gonna do this thing, I wanna try to be the best version of this uh, that there is. I'm going to try to take all the attributes of all the best ones. And you know, Randy, okay, he's going to go up and make a play on dudes. Okay, or he's going to run by a dude. You know, you got, you know, T.O., he's durable. You know, you got Marvin Harrison, just consistent. You know, just trying to take the best attributes with all these guys. Chris Carter, he's got great hands. You know, um, just try to take some of these things. And I'll put it all into one package. You know, and the only way I did that, I was like to focus on, on each one of those attributes on a daily basis, take one of them on a daily basis, focus on it, and just do the next thing on the next day. But, you know, I try to do all those things and, I mean, and, and, and putting a steady focus on those things, I fucking allow you to do that shit in the game. Right. You know, because you do it in practice all the time. You know, it's like mm-hmm. you're looking for opportunities to do it. You know, and, and I, you know, when those opportunities came, like I was talking about this with somebody the other day. I remember running down the field, we're playing Cincinnati. It's late in the game. We need to fucking play. And it's like late in the fourth or third quarter, and they're up by a touchdown. And, like, I know Matthew. Like Matthew see me hauling ass. He see me digging. He going to give me a chance. And I saw Reggie Nelson. I saw Pac-Man. And I'm like, oh, shit. They got my energy. That, that, that made me turn up, you know. I'm like, oh, yeah. God, this, this, this is like home team. Like, I know Reggie because we trained together coming out in the league. Pac-Man, we go way back. I'm like, come on, man. Please throw it. I just put my head down and run. I saw him launch that bitch. I'm like, okay, yeah. That's and that it's just deep like one, those right? are the moments, That's the one, yeah. yeah, in the end zone. Yeah, I know that. I remember yeah. that. Mm-hmm. And those are the moments that, like, you, you know, fucking live for, you know. So just like. You know, I just I've been there and done that where you let those moments slip by. So I there's I, and I did I had those moments. I feel I was fortunate to have those moments maybe early in my career and in college. I was like, okay, I know what that feeling feel like. I know what I, what I, I know what I need to do to affect that change so it don't happen again. Right. Yeah. True. True. 
All right, let's talk lines at 49ers. Um, you guys are seven-point underdogs. What do you guys both think about the uh, Niners defense? I feel like it's the most talked-about thing, you know, how talented they are, you know, top to bottom. And, you know, what you guys think is going to happen? Like, what's out? I mean, I'm maybe don't, you don't want to talk about it, but Calvin, if you want to talk about it, what you think is going to happen? You know. I don't know. I'm you, the current pro. You got anything? Yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, I'll go ahead. Uh, I mean, the Niners defense, they're strong. I mean, they've been good for like the last three years. I don't care who's coaching them. D'Amico Ryan's last year, he left. Uh, other dudes, I think Steve Wilkes steps in and they're still playing at a high level. So, I mean, we have a, a DB on our team, Emmanuel Mosley. He was on the um, on the Niners for like four or five years. And he told me like, they don't run a lot on defense. They don't run a lot of calls. They just run and hit. Like, that's the biggest thing is they think they're going to out-bully you. Um, mm -hmm. They're going to be more physical than you. And I'm like, shoot, that's the kind of game that we play too on offense. We feel like, you know, we're going to play harder, um, harder than that other team. Our O-line is, is nice. So, um, mm -hmm. I mean, that's the kind of offense that we have. So we kind of, I think we match up pretty well against the Niners offensively and defensively wise. Um, so it's going to be a good game, but they're definitely, they got some guys on defense, both uh, Fred Warner, um, their safety actually got hurt. He went, I went to USC with them. It was all pro last year, but corners is playing good. Traverius Ward, um, Greenlaw, their D line is, is, is solid. So it's going to be a good game. I can't wait. I agree, man. I feel like that's been their their motto ever since. Like when we were playing San Fran, they had like Patrick Willis, you know, and, and those guys. They were just, you know, they just want like you said, they just want to pound you. They want right. to hit you. You come into the you come in the candlestick, you know, and they just want to try to abuse you and make you bleed red like their uniform. But um, you know, I think that part of that too comes from you know they got John Lynch back there at the helm over there at the gym as well. You know, and that's how his that's how he played ball as well back in the day. You know, they want to hit you. And let you feel them, but um, you know, I, I'm curious to see. You know, is do you think um, uh, was it Darius Ward? You think yeah. is he, he going to trail you at this game, or um, what's you know, your thought there? I don't think so. I was, um, you know, I don't know if they do that much. Obviously, it's only Tuesday, so we haven't really got to the film. I know the coaches have, but I'm gonna get back into it tomorrow. But I don't know if they really travel like that, and they move me around so much. I feel like it's kind of hard to travel with me because mm -hmm. yep. if you travel with me, I'm gonna be motioning across. Like it's gonna be really hard. So I doubt yep. they do that. But they got, I mean, they got two solid corners. One of them I actually played against at Oregon. Um, the other one Ward, and then their nickel solid too. So I think I don't, I don't know if they'll travel with me. We got um, so much stuff. I mean, Ben does a great job of moving everyone. So okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I mean, obviously, I like, I don't mind the matchup. Um, I, like I said, I wasn't sure which matchup I wanted because, I mean, obviously Green Bay um, and, and Love and their running back, uh, Jones, they're just, they were just, I feel like they were just trending up over there they um, until they ran into, I mean, honestly, I feel like, they, like I said, they should have won that last game. They should they dropped two interceptions. That yeah. could have changed the course of that game there. Um, and then we would have had a third game at home. That was really nuts. Crazy, <laughs> yeah. But, but uh, with this game here, I think, like I said, you just got to bottle up McCaffrey. I think the, the y'all's D line has been strong. I think they've been they haven't been uh, uh, they have not said they haven't been leak proof, but I think they they've been strong against the run. Um, right. The secondary, you know, like those guys have been getting their hands on the ball lately. You know, I know that was a concern. Uh, maybe I know for me later in the latter, latter part of the season, but that's when the guys, you know, Iffy, uh, Kirby, obviously, right. uh, 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 um, um, Gardner's Johnson. back. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah, man, it's just good to have him back out there, man. And so it's just if y'all can just those guys can keep getting their hands on balls, affecting that D line, obviously touching the quarterback, and, you know, just hit him a couple of times. I mean, we know how that affects the quarterback, man. You hit Purdy, I feel, I feel like a couple of times you get him on the ground. Um, I'm excited. I'm, just, I'm honestly, I, I mean, I see. I'm not gonna say I see what needs to happen, but I, I mean, we've been through this, man. I know y'all, y'all about to go through it. Y'all, y'all, y'all are head deep in it. I mean, from the outside looking in, I'm just like, man, y'all can just do this right here, right? Like, crazy, dog. Like this shit gonna be crazy, man. We gonna have a good time in Vegas. <laughs> yeah, right? it's gonna be crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, are, are you going to the game? I'm not, bro. I, I would be out there this week. I, I got a event. I got a watch party um, scheduled this Saturday, so we, I got a watch party at my company. So we're gonna be watching okay. here. Well, I think I was sure would if I I, could, I I thought about canceling it. Only way I was gonna cancel, I was like, I was like, babe, if if like like the team hit me up and like they need me to go, I'm like, hey guys, they hit me up, like I gotta right. go. But <laughs> I was like, I can't just cancel it. They're gonna my fucking fans or my 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 partners are gonna be pissed at me. Right, right. I feel that.
No, but okay. um, yeah, one hundred percent, man. Y'all, y'all just hold it down so that you know. Like I said we have a good time in Vegas, man. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I know my, I know my brother loves Vegas too. Uh, <laughs> boy, be, boy, be I, in that. I do not like Vegas. You love Vegas. I hate Vegas. I fucking taking that three hour trip <laughs> nah. over there. No, like, no, it's just it's so draining. You know, it's like I could go like he 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 made, he made Pro Bowl last year. My whole family went. I'm like, bro, I'm going for two days. Like, they went for like four or five days, the whole pro, but I don't know how long they went. Oof. I'm like, I'll catch you Saturday, That's Sunday. Like you started to lose, you started yeah. to lose time off your life after three days. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm going Saturday, <laughs> Sunday, bro. I'm like, I got two days for you. That, I'm not going four days in Vegas. It's like, oh, man. Yeah. I got a convention I go out there every year. It's like three days every time I go out there, but it's just like, oh, man. I'm like, yeah, no sleep. I'm too old for this now. F- food. How old are y'all? How old are y'all? 27. I'm 24. Yeah. All right, cool. 27, cool. yeah. Cool, cool. cool. Good deal. Good hey, deal. Calvin, I don't know if you remember. So you play with Kerry Colbert. He was my coach at USC. Yep. Um, yep. When I was back at USC, he actually had a, a Zoom. We were all the receivers were on, and you actually talked to us when I was at USC. I don't know if you remember that. Um, yes, I remember. I remember that. I remember he had me calling. Yeah. Yeah. So I just that's what's up. I forget. Oh, so you were there at that time. That's that's yeah. smooth. Kerry, man. <laughs> Did he ever tell you the story about uh, our, our receiver coach? Nah, he and, never told me. He put it when he got in pass. Uh-uh. So I guess, you know, Kerry got pissed off at Sean Jefferson. Because Sean, he would push us. He would ask us, like, the beginning of every season, you want to be great this year? And obviously, what you going to say? Yeah, of course. Right. And he was like, I'm going to coach you like you want to be great. And he he proceeded to do that. So he, he would push us and, you know, he would push us, like, mentally and physically. So I guess he pushed Kerry a little too much one time. And so he's, you know, he he's all turned up during training camp. And he liked to get in his training. And he liked to get in the pads. If he feel like we ain't out there blocking like we need to be during training camp, like we ain't getting our head in there, we ain't, you know we ain't fitting up and all that, so he gonna he'll get in pads and be the DB. He's like, well, I, if you ain't if you ain't gonna block right, now, I'm gonna run through your ass basically. All right, so he get actually <laughs> in fucking foot and like the shoulder pads and there he get full fitted out. And, you know I'm you know I go first, I always lead it off, whatever. You know I I, I strong arm you know just I keep in the yeah. standard. I don't let him get close to me because right. he 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 all turned up you know <laughs> how big is he so Kerry oh uh, Sean Jay's probably like you know six one okay okay decent so size. you know right. you know he he's slow though know, he done lost all his playing weight obviously you know so I'm just fitting him up so you know Nate B go next Nate B like man come on now. I ain't playing with you yeah whatever yeah. so Kerry Cobra come up he pissed he mad man he come up and damn near give Sean Jay a concussion. Like, I think there's a picture of Sean Jay, like, with his feet up in the air and, like, his head on the ground. Like, I, I swear you got to hit Kerry Colbert up for that picture. Bro. I'm going to hit I swear, it's I'm out there. Him. It's out there. That's hilarious. Yeah. Kerry, yeah, that's OG, man. He's a good dude, man. Yeah, he's a great dude. He actually, he's on the, he's coaching for the Broncos now, receivers coach. So, when we played, when we played Denver, um, after the game, we chopped it up with him. It was a, it was a good time. It's pretty cool to see. I just like I just like to watch the guys, you know, as they matriculate and, and, and grow. You know, I like to love to see them grow. You know, um, throughout the league, man. You know, love to see our, you know, Demico Ryan's. I was kind of hesitant when he took that job last year uh, with the Texans, but then once he got the first pick, I was like, okay, all right, maybe he, if he can line himself with a quarterback, he can be all right. And he did just that, so I'm not actually happy for happy for what happened for him there, but. Um, yeah, man. That's I'd love to see our guys have opportunities, man. Because we got too many goddamn, you know, black players or brown players in this league to not have that, right. you know, many of them in, in a head head job somewhere. So yeah. yeah, yeah, man. Well, shoot, man. Thank you so much, Calvin. That was it. Um, appreciate the time. It was an awesome yeah, man, episode. Thank you. Um, if there's anything else you want to say about primitive performance, the Lions, um, shoot, go ahead. You got the floor. Um, I appreciate it, man. Um, well, like I say, let's uh, y'all hold it down so I can see y'all in Vegas one. But um, Primitive Performance, man, check us out, PrimitivePerformance.com. That's P-R-I-M-I-T-I-V, performance. That's Primitive without the E on it, PrimitivePerformance.com. Check us out, man. Shoot. Thank you to Calvin um, for his time. It was amazing being able to catch up with him, chop it up. Haven't really talked to him too much. Um, you know, I sat down with him one time, or he sat down with us. Me and Craig, we were at a restaurant. He sat down, t- chopped it up with us, but... Sure. Half of the stories that he told, I never even knew about. So I appreciate Calvin for his time. Uh, Make sure you guys check out the St. Brown podcast, wherever you guys find your podcast um, with the 33rd team. But that's it for us this week. Hopefully, you know, next week we'll be talking about something else. But until then, peace out.